Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I thought we would just, uh, you know, do a little of the old school here, just record while we're inking a comic panel here. Uh, this comic here is actually done for the standard issue 5, and I'm not sure if any of you guys, or girls out there, uh, remember this character, for those of you that have read the book. Um... This is Zachary Zarthos from the first issue. Uh, he's the standards, I guess you would say, his main villain. Um, and uh, it's really cool to be able to draw this guy again. It's been, like I said, four issues since I've been able to draw him. And, uh, you know, I figured, why not? We haven't really been doing too many videos like these on the channel lately. Um, and I'd like to get back into just the raw drawing stuff. Not necessarily all the instructional stuff and all that cool stuff back and forth. But um, the method you just saw me do right there for the glasses... Uh, Freddie E. Williams talks about that in his uh, his book that I always talk about all the time. That's the DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics. I like to pimp the hell out of that book because, like I say every single time, I think it's a phenomenal book. Great intro, uh, introduction um, to get you, you know, thinking in a digital format for your comics and Photoshop and stuff. But basically, uh, what you would do there, what you saw, is you would draw something that requires an outline. So it could be shoelaces, in this case the glasses, and you just draw them with a thicker black and then you just select it on its own separate layer, reduce the selection and then fill it in white. Um, I find it speeds things up big time, you don't have to go in there, you know if you're working traditionally with a pencil or possibly like um, an inking brush or a pen, it's a little bit easier to get those uh, lines I find. Digitally, sometimes your lines aren't always 100% and uh, it's just a quick shortcut and you know it Anything that gets rid of having to do or press the undo button usually is a pretty good thing. And I've already got the outlines pretty much done here. Um, what this video is going to encompass is just going through the tight lines, I'd like to call it, where you know we'll have this character and the, and the, the little girl in the drawing as well finished um, and ready to have, I like to call inks, which would basically be shadows and rendering and stuff on top. And, uh, you know, I've talked a little bit about this before, the differences between Manga Studio, uh, which is this. Uh, this is the EX4 version, and uh, the differences, differences between this and Photoshop. Photoshop, to me, uh, I still love working in it. Um, I still work in it, uh, especially for work. Uh, but comic work, I don't know, Manga Studio, just the, the line quality I find is a little bit better. Um, you know, you don't always have to keep redrawing things, you can just have things flow a little bit naturally and gives your lines a little bit you know a little bit more volume to it, a little bit more life to it and what you saw me do there was I went to the second panel where this little girl's in there and I just copied the drawing I had and pasted it um, and changed the line art color to red that way you know it pops and it's not black I can see it and I just like to keep it around sometimes like that uh, so I have the reference right there instead of always having to zoom out to look at that panel and come back um, and you've probably seen me doing this quite a bit during this video is just this flipping thing. I have people ta ask me all the time, why why are you flipping the canvas all the time? I've talked about it before, but uh, I like to work back and forth like that, you know, flipping flipping it horizontal. It just gives me a fresh eye. I can always see things brand new all the time. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll do that once every five, ten minutes around there or something just, just to make sure, like, if I'm done the, the face, I'll flip it just to see how it looks. And here, I'm making a new layer, and as you can see, I, I changed the color to red, so again, it doesn't blend with the, the black or the blue. And uh, I'm just tightening up some of the anatomy for the head, and, you know, putting her glasses on there, and now I'm just carving in the shapes of where her hair is going to be. Uh, one of the beautiful things about uh, digital, and, you know, I'll, I'll always say it, and I'll continue to say it, and you guys have seen some previous videos where I draw in different colors, you can still do that. Um digitally obviously and it just it's more I find it's just more flexible that's all and um, yeah so there we go so we got the side of her here and um, one quick thing I guess I could talk about um, I suppose I should do a video on how I address hair um, I, I you know this might be the artist coming out you know and talking a little like talking real with you guys here um, and I'm assuming most of you guys and girls out there feel the same way you don't feel confident in all the areas of your drawing Right, and for me here, I don't feel very confident in it. I think I can get some pretty good things done, but uh, talking about how to draw it, you know, I still need to do my practice, just like everybody. And uh, you know, I think once I get a little more confident with it, I'll do a video on it with you guys, probably pretty soon, because I do get quite a bit of private messages and emails and stuff asking for people to do tutorials on hair. Um, and I can totally understand why people would want that. Anything with that, like that's like fabric or or 
has some, I don't want to say life to it, but some motion or energy to it. It's, you know, how do you draw that kind of thing? And um, nothing wrong with that. So we have her uh, finished up here. So you saw me make a new layer again. And this one I usually call contour layer. Another uh, habit I picked up from the uh, book I mentioned earlier. A lot of the, the workflow that I work in, um, I took from uh, Freddie's book there as well. And I still do it to this day. And uh, you'll actually see me right here. What I do is you can see that now she's overlapping uh, the character in the background. So instead, normally what I would do is erase him. Uh, you know, in Photoshop, you would make like this fill layer so you can black out the background. I don't really worry about that. But in this video, I actually end up doing it just because I figured it'd be cool just to show you guys what that does. And here, um, this is actually something I saw on Todd McFarlane. Yeah, he has a YouTube channel. And um, I remember him writing on here. And since then, I try to do it if I ever need something. So I just leave a little note for, you know, you normally leave a note for your inker or your colorist. But in this case, I'm the inker, so I'm just leaving it for uh, Mike, my colorist, uh, on the book. Uh, just a little note on there, you know, um, to make sure, because I can understand how this would be a little weird with the way I draw hands and folds and stuff, um, that he does have a ring finger on, because he is married. And, you know, it's not that it's addressed in the script, but personally, I, I just don't, I want to make sure that detail is captured in there, just to help sell, you know, the character a little bit. And, um, yeah, so what I was doing there while I was, uh, you know, running my mouth, <laughs> is I had his hand drawn on the sketch layer, and I just adjusted it so that it frames the panel a little bit better and it makes it just looks a little bit better that way like he's you know he's going to grab her by the shoulders kind of thing so here you can see me erasing uh, his line art underneath hers and after a while I was getting into the hair and I'm like there's a lot of like erasing here but what if I needed to move him around what if I needed that flexibility I'm working in digital right so the really quick tool that you can do is you just grab your contour layer that's on a separate layer and it's making an outline of the character okay so what you do is you literally just finish the contour make sure all the lines are connected so that there's think of it like a circle or a square and once you have that square or circle you can fill the inside with a color that's what you're doing so as you can see here I'm just tightening up some of the lines that weren't picked up there on the contour layer and what I'm going to do is fill it or select it sorry with the wand tool expand that selection by about one or two pixels and then fill it white on a new layer as well. Then I take that white layer, bring it all the way to the bottom, and what it'll do is it'll, as long as she's above his line art, all of his line art will be knocked out. So there you go. As you can see real quick, I could literally move her anywhere on that panel and it'd be fine. Here I thought it was a little bit creepy the way his eyes were that I had before. They kind of look like they were looking at her chest. You know, I don't want this to be perverted or anything, so I had to adjust the eyes to make it look like he's giving her a little bit of eye contact as opposed to what could be looked at as a whole different image based on the eyes and um, yeah so we're basically getting to the end of the video just wanted to wrap up what I'm doing here is adding a, a another contour line around him so that he pops as well that way when I come back to do the inks or as I like I said before the rendering in the shadow it's all done so I um, think the video is going to show me add a little bit of speed lines to the panel as well and that should be should be it and then I'll wrap the video up with just showing uh, you know the final image just across the screen here with a little high high image so you guys can check that out but thank you guys so much again for watching appreciate all the support uh feel free to share and like the video if you enjoyed it um and like always keep reading comics keep making comics and i'll talk to you soon Thanks again, everybody, for watching the show. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, like we did before, I just wanted to include two more links to other videos that you may enjoy if you enjoyed this one. Kind of related, kind of not. It's all good. It's all digital drawing. Um, so the first video here, uh, you can watch me ink a cover. Um, the only reason I included this is it's kind of taken what I just showed you with the panel and what I would be doing next. So once you have that nice tight line art, how I would go about adding the shadows, the rendering, making it a final image. And the other video here is Wolverine from Marvel Comics. And you can watch me go from thumbnail right to a finished ink drawing. And uh, hopefully you learn a little bit something, you enjoy it. And like always, thank you so much. Thumbs up again if you enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe because there's always new updates all the time. And keep reading comics, keep making comics, and uh, take care.